to let DMS perform before he became famous, right? You made a comment about him having a different voice before he became famous. Yeah, he he was rapping, he was rapping in Yonkers, um, but nobody knew him yet. And I used to play at this place called the Castle in the Bronx, legendary club. And he used to come and see me at the Castle. And I used to put him on stage at the Castle. He didn't really have the dog voice; he had a straight voice. And at the time, I think he was going through his thing with K Solo for the Spellbound record, uh, Spellbound rap. Um, but and he he also had a record called uh, uh, Born Loser that was on an independent label. And at the time, I was on WBLS in New York, and I was playing that on BLS, you know. And um, later on, he got his deal, and he changed his whole character, his whole. I'm not gonna say his character. I'm just, he changed his whole uh, persona, and um, got the dog voice. I don't know if that grew with him as he got older. You know, but it ended up being epic, man. And um, it's sad to see him gone, man, because he has so much more to do. Yeah, that's crazy, man. I ain't know that. So the voice he was using wasn't his real voice. It wasn't the dog voice. Remember, he was younger, too. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, when you're younger, you're finding yourself. You know what I'm saying? As an artist, you know, but as far as how nice he was, always nice. What was the issue between him and K Solo? I don't really know the real issue. I know K Solo had a spellbound record and DMX had a spellbound bound rap. And it was a thing about who made it first. And, you know, I don't really know the particular. I just know they were going at each other about it. How you feel about the people that compare X and Tupac? When they compare the two, do you agree or no? No. I mean, I see why people compare them because in Pac's revolutionary side, you know, they compare to. DMX godly side. But I really don't see, they two different artists. You know, um, and that was the thing about artists that came from that time and that era, more so than now, and it's not a disrespect or nothing, but you kind of identified who was who. Everybody, everybody had a, their own voice and their own identity, you know, where now at times a lot of people sound alike. You know what I'm saying? You have some ones that's dope, but they sound alike and there's no real identity. They gotta have a hit record on the radio and walk past you down the street and you won't know who they are. You know what I'm saying? To where if a DMX had a hit record on the radio, you know who he is. Maybe because of the promotion, maybe because of the individuality, but a lot of things when you look like somebody, sound like somebody doing the same thing, it doesn't kind of contribute to being a, a legend. It just goes with the flow, you know what I'm saying? So it waters down and it stays for the time and not be timeless. You know what I'm saying? DMX is timeless. You know, Jay-Z is timeless. KRS is timeless. Nas is timeless. Like these dudes is timeless because of their individuality. You know, um, Wayne and T.I., um, you know, uh, Young Thug, you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people started sounding like Young Thug. A lot of people started sounding like the Migos. A lot of people started sounding like Wayne. Wayne was the, the head spinner of that. So, you know, when something gets hot, people want to do it. You know, but what makes you really hot is when you contribute something to culture that people want to do. So, I don't really see DMX and Pac being the same, but I understand why people kind of put them in the same bracket. Yeah, that's real talk. R.I.P. to X, man. What was your reaction when he passed away? I was hurt. You know, it was a big loss. You know, it was a big loss, man. Like, you know, and I know where his heart is at. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, big loss. <laughs>